What's up you guys, Avery here, and welcome to a very interesting deck profile that came in 11th place, at least that's what it said on the screenshot that I saw. I don't know if this was a locals, a regional, I, I really don't know what this was. I just know that the pilot, or the duelist, wh whatever, came in 11th place with Crystal Beast playing Lord of the Heavenly Prison, and we're scythe locking people, and we're playing Rainbow Over Dragon. This is this is bananas, y'all. So smash the ever living crap out of that subscribe button and the like button and all that good stuff, so we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. Also, very quickly, I want to thank you all for showing all the support on my previous video about where I was freaking out that some random car pulled up to my house. I am okay. I have obviously contacted the police. I am totally safe. My family and I are totally safe. I really appreciate all of the positive and kind words in that video. Don't worry, we're safe. Ain't nothing, ain't nobody gonna stop me from making videos almost every day. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into this video. So we're playing one copy of Artifact Scythe because we want to scythe lock people. We're playing Dagda. Um, the way that I see it with this deck is that you seem to scythe lock people by using Tornado Dragon on the opponent's turn. So that's the thing. For the Crystal Beast Engine, we're playing one Amber Mammoth, one Amethyst Cat, one Cobalt Eagle, one Emerald Tortoise, three Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon because of course it's a Crystal Beast, one Ruby Carbuncle, the most broken one, three Sapphire Pegasus, and one Topaz Tiger. So What's interesting about the Crystal Beast, in case you don't know, is that keep in mind that all of these cards come, well, rather the old Crystal Beast cards, like all of these, come from the GX era, an era where cards really weren't once per turn. You know, if you can summon Sapphire Pegasus three times in a turn, then you can put three Crystal Beast monsters into your spell and trap zone. The other effects that they have are pretty irrelevant. The only good ones are Sapphire Pegasus being able to put one in the spell and trap zone, and then Ruby Carbuncle, whenever it's summoned from the spell and trap zone, can summon all the other ones from your spell and trap zone. Um, and then anytime that any of these Crystal Beasts are destroyed, uh, while face up in a monster zone i thought it said destroy by battle but just destroyed while face up in a monster zone you can put them in your spell and trap zone um their other effects are really irrelevant but i'll go through them here real quick uh emerald tortoise can change the battle position on one of your monsters cobalt eagle you can bounce a crystal beast card to control uh to place it on top of your deck um amethyst cat can cut its attack in half and then attack directly amber mammoth whenever one of your crystal beasts is target for an attack you can change it to amber mammoth topaz tiger gains 400 attack during the damage step whenever it attacks an opponent's monster uh, moving on, we are playing two Rainbow Dragon with one Neos, and then three Lord of the Heavenly Prison. So this is really interesting because of the fact that, keep in mind that Lord of the Heavenly Prison protects your back row. Specifically, set cards on the field can't be destroyed by card effects. Then if a set spell or trap is activated except during the damage step, then you just get to special summon it. Then if you activated that effect while it was revealed, then you can reveal and set a spell or trap directly from your deck. So yeah, it doesn't protect your crystal beast, but it does protect like your set trap trick, your set ultimate crystal magic, your crystal conflict. Like it, it protects your trap cards. And if there's any spells that you do want to set, then you can bluff out the opponent that way too. From what I can tell, it doesn't really seem like you're going to be setting a whole lot of bluff in your back row because you're going to want the Crystal Beast in your back row whenever you need them, especially for Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon, which is a really interesting effect because it's the same thing if it's destroyed while face up in a monster zone, you can put it in the spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. And then when an attack is declared involving a Crystal Beast monster, you could special summon it from your hand and then you can banish it. Uh, when it's treated as a continuous spell, the special summon a level 4 lower crystal beast from your deck, so Sapphire Pegasus, but you negate its effects, and if you do, you add an ultimate crystal monster from your deck to your hand, so that's going to be Rainbow Dragon, because remember, it's now treated as an ultimate crystal card, and then Neos, of course, because we're using Neos Fusion to go into Rainbow Neos, or Rainbow Over, well, excuse me, not Rainbow Over Dragon, because that's just 7 crystal beast monsters, you need to use ultimate crystal magic or tribute Rainbow Dragon for it. For the spells, we're playing 3 Crystal Bond, 1 Crystal Crystal Paramus, three Neos Fusion, two Prosperity, three Rainbow Bridge. You add a Crystal Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand, and it's not once per turn, which is fucking busted. Then we're playing three Crystal Conclave, two Ice Dragon's Prison, three Solemn Strike, three Torrential Tribute, three Trap Trick, and three of the Ultimate Crystal Magic. For the side deck, we're playing three copies of Token Collector, one Dragon's Capellia, one Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, because we're playing three Super Poly, so you want the extra targets, two Dark Hole, two Lightning Storm, and three Skill Drain. So you'd think that Dark Hole is a bit of 
a weird choice because why not just play Raigeki? But keep in mind that if you have your Crystal Beast on the field, then whenever they pop, you can put them in your spawn trap zone. So Dark Hole is really not a hindrance to you. And then for the extra deck, we're playing one Rainbow Neos, three Rainbow Over Dragon. Almost said Rainbow Neos, but Rainbow Over Dragon. Uh, one Abyss Dweller, one Zeus, one Gallic Granite because this deals with rocks. So you can either add Lord of the Heavenly Prison from your deck to hand or special summon it. So you're more than likely just going to add it. A Baguska, two Tornado Dragon Access Co, Dagda, one Nightmare Phoenix and Unicorn along with the IP Mascarena. Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't know how the fuck this deck plays. I did a couple randomized hands and it seems cool. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, the Neos is a brick and a half. Trap Trick is cool because you can just get to any one of your three ofs. Pegasus can put one on the back row. Ultimate Crystal Magic is instantly live because you can send seven with different names from your hand deck or face up field of the grave to summon your fusion monster. Um, I feel like Trap Trick really does carry this deck because it just gets you any normal trap. So you can go for Torrential, Ice Dragon's Prison, and if you don't open up both, Ultimate Crystal Magic especially. Um, and for Rainbow Over Dragon, it's actually really interesting. So it's any seven Crystal Beast monsters, and it's always treated as an Ultimate Crystal card. And it's either Fusion Summon or Special Summon by tributing one level 10 Ultimate Crystal monster, so i.e. Rainbow Dragon. And then once per turn, you can banish a Crystal Beast monster from your grave, and it gains attack equal to the banished monsters until the end of the turn. And then Quick Effect, you contribute it to shuffle all cards on the field into the deck. So if you tribute, you know, Topaz, it's going to go up to 56. Rainbow Neos, we all know that that card's busted. Um, yeah. So I really... <laughs> I don't know what to make of this, like, other than just WTF, because, I mean, we don't have the structure deck yet, which I really don't think is going to help Crystal Beast all that much, but it's still Crystal Beast topping in 2022, or 11th place, excuse me, because if it's not top 8, then it's not a top, so I'll go eat my own ass uh, with the Ultra Ball and the Ultra Banana, right? Um, but... Regardless, though, it's really cool to see the old Crystal Beast being used when we don't even have the advanced Crystal Beast yet, which, again, I really don't think that's going to help out the deck as a whole so much. It's going to be the more generic support that we get to help Crystal Beasts become much better than what they already are. But, guys, please, let me know what you think down in the comments below. This is really interesting. I highly encourage that you try this out because... Again, like what I did with Branded Eldritch, just pantsing people because they didn't know what to expect from my deck. If you're playing this, people definitely aren't going to be expecting this. You know, they see you drop out a Sapphire Pegasus. You know, they may not even affect real you. They may let it go through because they're thinking, oh, it's just a Sapphire Pegasus. Like, that's not going to do anything. So, guys, please, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.